Hi, today I'm going to show you how to get started with a beginner's watercolor palette. This is great, um, especially for nature journaling because it's one you can take on the go really easily. What you're going to need to get started is an empty small palette. I got this one on Amazon. You can pick up other ones. It does not need to be this version in particular, but preferably one with a lid that will close so you can take it on the go. And it needs to hold at least six colors. I'm going to go through those colors next. So this should be empty when you begin and we actually fill the colors in. So the colors you would want to start with is a neutral tint. That's the name of the, the shade. I use Daniel Smith brand primarily. It's a really um, excellent grade of paint and I like starting even beginners with a great type of paint because then you're going to just see better results from the get-go. So instead of starting yourself with something cheaper, that produces poor quality, go ahead and get a nicer type of paint. You only need six of them to start. And each of these tubes will make three palettes. So if you're making this for your kids or for yourself and some friends, you can make three palettes and this will last you a really long time. So neutral tints, your first color. You'll also need a yellow. I have a Hansa yellow medium or Hansa yellow light would be a great choice. The blue I've chosen is ultramarine blue. The, this is a key I'm gonna go through in, in another video, but when you are mixing colors, you do not need red because red is actually not a primary color. What you need is a magenta, and the name of this one, it's difficult to pronounce, I'm gonna to try to get it right the first time, quinacridone pink quinacridone pink. This is the color I use to mix almost all my shades. I do include a red in the palette. It's Pyrrol Red, P-Y-R-R-O-L. And that is the only time I use this is if I actually just want to paint red. But it's not a primary color, so I do not use this to mix colors. And the final color is not a watercolor. It's the only color on even my more extensive palette that's not watercolor. This is a, what's called a gouache, and it's a type of paint, just like acrylic, watercolor, oil. Gouache is a, an opaque paint, and so I have white on my palette for adding highlights or things that I don't want to be transparent on any painting that I'm doing. Uh, this is another brand, Winsor Newton, also an excellent brand. So Daniel Smith or Winsor Newton are both highly rated. Those are the six colors that I put on a beginner palette. And the reason I only include those is because it's really helpful if you're starting out to learn how to make the colors you want. And you can make most of the colors that you might ever need from these six that I've provided. I'll go through how to start making those colors in another tutorial. But for today, once you have them, I have just filled in each of my little spaces with one of the six colors. It's going to take a couple of days for that to dry and then be ready to use. So fill it in. I've also added a dab of yellow at each end. You can put this anywhere on your palette where you're not going to be mixing paint. And that's so my, my yellow will stay pure and I can use one yellow for mixing with my blues and another yellow for mixing with my reds and so it doesn't get polluted. That's just a nice little thing that I've picked up along the way. So that would be your palette. Let it dry and then that's ready to go. The next thing is the trick that I've learned from John Muir Laws. So much of what I have learned in watercolor is because of him and you can look up his tutorials as well. They're excellent. It's taking an old sock. This is a clean one from the lost sock pile which most of us have a few lying around. I'm just going to cut a bit of that sock off. And when I'm out in the field, I put this on my non-dominant wrist. And it's what I use to clean my brush so that I can keep painting and not have paper towels or extra things lying around. I'll show you how I assemble this all together in a moment. And then the last thing you'll need is a paintbrush. I love these water brushes. There's several brands available and several sizes. I've, I've shown you a large, a medium and a small here today. Um, starting off, medium is probably going to be your best 
and most useful brush if you just want to purchase one and you fill that with water in here and this is the really cool thing about this beginning palette i'm going to put this all together and so once you have assembled it you can wrap your sock around it stick your brush in there and this is all that you need to go out along with your paper and paint anywhere so it's very easy to transport i love these little beginner palettes they're perfect for as you're learning new skills and just wanting to get some practice in and so that is everything you need to get started with your materials so hopefully that was helpful and tune in for some more videos as we'll go into color mixing and brush techniques and just very very beginning how to get started with watercolor painting thanks